Sarah Palin spoke in Williston, North Dakota this past week, demonstrating the impact of oil production on Christian education. Palin said North Dakota embodies the drill baby drill mantra more so than anywhere else. She adds Alaska and North Dakota also share a kinship based on oil and a pioneering spirit. Last week, Senator Pat Roberts of Kansas was our guest right here on the Palin Update. Roberts is endorsed by Sarah Palin, and he's running against so-called independent Greg Orman. Well, this past week, Governor Palin showed just how far from an independent Orman really is. Palin posted on social media, so what do you call an independent, in quotes, candidate who's donated thousands to Obama, Reid, and Hillary? An independent, in quotes, candidate who is pro-amnesty and supports Obamacare. You call that candidate a liberal Democrat, and that should explain why in Kansas, quote-unquote independent candidate Greg Orman has won the support of the George Soros family. Greg Orman will attend a high-dollar fundraiser, not in Kansas, but in New York City, hosted by Jonathan Soros, who has donated over $3.7 million to liberal causes over the years. She then urges Kansas to vote Roberts in November. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page, follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA, and visit SarahPalinChannel.com. It's time for Commonwealth Common Sense with Susan Stimson and Kevin Shola. Hi, Susan. How are you? Kevin, I'm doing great. It's nice to be back this week. Yeah, thanks for being here. So a huge election coming up, obviously, and races all over the country, not only for the Senate, which is what everyone's talking about for sure, but the House, some gubernatorial races, attorney general. And there's a lot going on. And uh, you would think that if you are inclined to be on the left of things or a Democrat, you would want your incumbent two-term president to be out there campaigning for you. But Apparently, that's not the case. Uh, Most Democrats have been uh, hiding from Barack Obama. And, well, you have a little bit on one in Maryland who didn't hide, and then some people ran for cover. Well, what's interesting about what is happening with the Democrat candidates, I guess they think that they can just rewrite everything that they've done in the past. You have Mary Landrieu, who's trying to, uh, as the incumbent senator in Louisiana, trying to distance herself then you have Allison Lundergan Grimes in Kansas who refused to say who she voted for uh, when it's <laughs> clear that she was a delegate for Barack Obama in 2012 yeah. at the at his nominating process. But most interesting is the campaign event that President Obama just attended for the candidate for um, Democrat candidate for governor Anthony Brown in Maryland. And as he made this rare appearance. As he began speaking, there were just a a steady stream of people in the crowd who got up to leave as he was talking. So Barack Obama made it clear, as did Michelle, that it is his policies and, and the actions of the Democrats that are on the ballot this November. And I think that it seems like the people, they understand clearly that it's Harry Reid that's held everything up in the Senate, won't let any amendments, no votes to come forward. And then, incredibly, Barack Obama's unpopular you know, initiatives that he's pushed through and just his lack of leadership. I think that we have a real strong chance here in November of seeing Republicans take the majority in the Senate. Well, he certainly should be unpopular. I mean, the damage has been done on so many levels. We have so many issues you could list. But, I mean, of course, what's hot right now is the Ebola situation and and other viruses coming in here. And Obama's open borders aren't helping with that, bringing people back to the U.S. to treat. The Guantanamo situation, trying to bring that onto U.S. soil. I mean, the idea was always to take things away from here so American people would be safe. But... You know, it's interesting. I heard someone uh, Sunday at church, a soldier that goes to our church, uh, he wasn't speaking to me. I happened to just walk by him. I was chasing my daughter. And uh, I heard him say to someone, hey, listen, send me to Afghanistan. Send me to Iraq. That's fine. Don't send me to go fight Ebola. That's not my job. And well, I, I couldn't I agree think more. That, yeah, I think that there's just an overall distrust. And we've spoken about this before. On the program, I just think that there's an overall distrust uh, right now, and and it does go both ways with both parties. And I certainly hope that if the Republicans do take control of the Senate, that they will step up this time in leadership, and that they will not be afraid, you know, to vote and to lead on issues uh, on which 
I believe they're going to be elected this November. Uh, I do know even here in Virginia, where Senator Mark Warner supposedly was untouchable, he is feeling the heat from the Obama policies, and he's doing everything that he can to separate himself from the president. But what Americans need to remember, and definitely Virginia voters need to remember, that Mark Warner and other Democrats like him have voted lockstep with President Obama and with Harry Reid all yeah. along the path. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you're out there for guys who are as ultra-liberal as the president. So it's amazing, isn't it? They're booing a policy, and, and, they have the, and they're out there supporting someone who has the same uh, take on things. You know, the other thing we have to watch out for, though, and voters have to watch out for, you know what's going to happen next – He can't be reelected. So the media, the pundits, the left, they're going to separate themselves from Obama now in order to prop up Hillary. And what they're going to do is say, well, Obama, you know, it was a nice story and the first uh, minority president. And, you know, but we really should have went with Hillary. She's the real deal. And that and that's the thing uh, we have to watch out for now, because it's easy to pile up on Obama if you're on the Democrat side, because he can't do anything for you anymore. Well, I do think that um, they can go ahead and and they can do this, as we've watched over the years, that the media does favor the Democrat Party. However, if Republicans uh, campaign and lead on the issues that the Republican Party identifies itself with, you know, the smaller government and keeping the power in the people's hands to make decisions for themselves and their family – then I don't think that we have anything to worry about. So I I think as this November is – Heading our way, I I feel very positively toward the aspect that Republicans may take control of the Senate, and it's just very interesting to watch uh, how they all cannot run away from President Obama fast <laughs> enough. You're right, Susan. And remember, uh, you talk about where the Republican Party stands. It's all right there on the platform. The planks are still there. It's just that we've had so many of these rhinos, if you will, uh, run away from them. But the platform is still very strong in the Republican Party. We just need people to adhere to it. I agree. All right. And they're running like flash from this guy. Unbelievable. Thanks a lot, Susan. Okay, Kevin. Susan Stimson in Virginia. More Commonwealth Common Sense next week. Now our weekly commentary, Steel Resolve. Here's Sarah Steelman. Thanks, Kevin. Censorship is alive and kicking in the Obama administration. And this is the worst and scariest kind. For those of you who missed it, the White House press pool puts out a White House press pool report shared by other reporters. Historically, it is a report written by other reporters who then can incorporate them into their own news articles. Apparently, the White House has been reviewing and demanding changes in this press pool report before it is distributed. This is outrageous. A key founding principle of our country was freedom of speech and the press. Theoretically, a free press should accurately report on our government as a way of holding government responsible by informing the public. Ask any citizen in any Eastern European democratic country struggling with a corrupt government occupied by old Soviet leaders. The press is non-existent in these countries because government suppresses what they can say. Consequently, the government continues their corrupt ways. Once again, this White House, has no respect for the visionary founding principles that made this country great for over 200 years. Obama loves to talk about civil rights, but what about our basic rights protected by our Constitution? President Obama should be ashamed of himself for blatantly violating the freedom of the press and thereby disrespecting the office of the presidency, our Constitution, and us, the American people. This is Sarah Steelman from Mama Grizzly Radio. Tune in again next week for another segment of Steel Resolve right here on the Palin Update. The Palin Update, including Commonwealth Common Sense and Steel Resolve, is on demand and available for download. So just head to mamagrizzlyradio.com, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Visit mamagrizzlyradio.com for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, like Mama Grizzly Radio on Facebook. And follow along on Twitter at Mama Grizz Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Susan B. Stimson, at Sarah underscore Steelman, and at 3DSTS. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. 
I want to thank Sarah Steelman, Susan Stimson, and everyone here at Mama Grizzly Radio. Thanks to Leslie Rutledge, and thank you for listening today. Special thanks to our sponsor, 3D Security and Training Academy. Visit 3DSTA.com. And please be sure to join us right here next time for another edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.